Okay, so once you have them placed where the anatomy makes sense, and I have a, a spine that kind of connects the head with the back through to the tail, even though these are my own kind of proportions, and there's nothing very creative or fantastical about this right now, but it is from three different references. One of the easy ways to start seaming textures together is to just use a 100% opacity eraser with a soft edge and to start taking content away. And then, once you've taken the hard edge off, going to a lower opacity, let's try about 24, And where you have overlap, always very helpful. That will help um, make the texture and the colors match. You can do that with the tail as well. There we go. Now I'm going to have to define a bottom edge of my character at some point, which the water here makes difficult. So I'm just going to leave that unsolved for now. I'll try to resolve these other areas as much as I can. And then I'm going to save it. And because Photoshop is running a little sluggishly, going to quit it after it's saved and it's saved right there to my desktop I'm going to quit any other programs I don't need open at the moment because Photoshop takes up a ton of processing and I will reopen just by clicking on my Photoshop file and then if the sluggishness still persists, then I would restart the computer to clear all the caches. Now what is nice is we're bringing all of our reference into one file folder. So now that I have the main chassis put together, I can start thinking about these other components. Things like the ram horns, which I think my favorite reference at about the right angle were these. But of course, I'm going to flip them horizontally. And I like that they were broken. And I can mess with their color, of course. I might, might also want to save these as individual elements because I want to space them differently. But I want a lot of the overlap for where they go into the head, that little crest of fur. So on one, I'm going to steal it like that, duplicate it, and go back to the smart layer. And then for the other, duplicate it like this. Maybe even steal the eye, just in case. Gosh, maybe even steal that ear and the eye. And duplicate that. And now I have two, two different references I can use. And just like assembling a car, I can play with kind of welding that, spacing that to my chassis. One's going to go up there, the others go over here, but of course I need to size them a little bit better. So that would be over the eye. 
Ooh, that's a dramatic eye. Yeah, that could work. All right, and now how do we clean them up? Well, first I deal with the internal edges. I'm not worried about color yet, but I take my 100% opacity soft brush using my tablet and just take off the rough edge or the sharp edge. Now on the other layer. Then, go for a much lower opacity. Start transitioning those textures a little bit. I want to be careful around the very edge of the ram. <coughs> the ram's horn, because I do not want that, especially this broken one, to feel in any way soft edged. So I might even just go with my lasso and kind of cut that edge out. But I do like some of the shading that it gives me behind it. Let me overshoot. So what I can do is actually select around it and then say select inverse. So now everything is selected except, <coughs> except within this area. <coughs> that allows me to use my soft eraser. without needing to worry about softening the horn itself. <coughs> but I can still take advantage of the shadow it's casting. And if I want to keep it like that, I can then actually keep that selection and use my burn tool on whatever's left of this layer darken those midtones, give myself even a little bit more of a shadow to work with. <coughs> and that does a lot to help sell the illusion. There's even a little kind of deerish, you know, ram's ear in there now. <coughs> suggest, you know, more fantasy 
creatureness. All right, save it as I go. Next, we can do the tusks. <coughs> woolly, woolly mammoths are not in great supply, so there weren't a ton of different reference options available. So I'll take what I can get, see if I can make them work. But there's this nice fur overlapping with them, which might be helpful. Duplicate, turn off the smart layer, move these up above. <coughs> now before I bring these on, remember I don't want to grow them too much. But in order to match the orientation, I might need to transform them a little bit. Command T. Let's try a little bit of distort. I'll just tug down on one corner. <coughs> Even though these are organic structures, you want them to feel they fit the same perspective. Let's try that. Now this is reference that's pretty distinct from its background. So I can try the magic wand, hold down shift. It's at a pretty tight tolerance of 12. You could probably expand that. all this background blue out of the way. I'm just holding down shift to add to the magic wand selection and delete. Now that's going to leave, the magic wand will always leave a little bit of debris, right? So then you can select the empty space and then do refine edge and let it bite in with the feathering. I'm going to do it a little bit less this time because I want those tusks to still feel strong. And that will get rid of all these little debris that were left as well. Hit delete. Did a nice job. Let's see, I'm going to turn off all the feathering. Just so it turns into a regular selection again. So I don't end up with this kind of ghosted edge. I want all my pixels to be very strong. So that's one tusk. Do that for the other. a repeat of what we learned in the landscape. 